We have never in the history of football seen a guy that possessed what Aaron Rodgers possessed. The difference between him and L. Bell is one guy's in the drug program and one guy's not. What Danny Green said changes zero about what I think about how Kawhi Leonard quit. Rodgers, R-O-D-G-E-R-S. How many more times do I need to say it or spell it out for you, Skip Bayless? I thought I made it abundantly clear, but you keep going back to the well for whatever reason. Because you keep looking wrong. <laughs> no, no. Longer and wronger you look. Skip Bayless, we have, listen, who's the better of the two? Is Rodgers, who's the more accomplished of the two? Clearly, it's Tom Brady. But here's the thing, Skip. We have never, ever in the history of football, seen a guy that possessed what Aaron Rodgers possessed. Nobody, no quarterback in history. This whole conversation is absurd to the point of being an insult to the greatest quarterback who ever played. And I'm not joking about this because I I'll give you this much. Aaron Rodgers might, I'll give you a might win, some sort of football throwing beauty contest against Tom Brady. But that's only a might because I think we're underestimating just how beautifully Tom Brady delivers the football. He does. Is there anything that Tom Brady can afford me to do or do for me that Aaron Rodgers can't? Absolutely not, Skip Bayless. If I put Aaron Rodgers under center, are there things and tangibles that he possess and skill sets that he possess that Tom Brady cannot match? Of course there are. If you had said one season, my answer would be Aaron Rodgers. For one game, I'd take Brady over anybody ever. You look at what Brady's done in the second half of the last three Super Bowls he's been in. Just the, the and I understand they didn't win against Philly, but the, what he did against Atlanta, what he did against Seattle, like, Brady, there are certain guys in sports, this is part of the Michael Jordan legacy, that whether, no matter what the numbers are, whatever it is, you're just like, man, I just trust him yeah. more than I trust anybody in that one game. It's easy for me, I gotta go with Aaron Rodgers. Because to me, when you're starting any type of equation and it's involved in sports, a lot of times that do with the talent, all right? I'm gonna take the best player on the field. And there's nothing that Tom Brady does better than Aaron Rodgers. And there's a bunch of things that Aaron Rodgers does better than Tom Brady. Todd Gurley's had no suspension, no drugs, no holdouts, no calling out his team to the press. Le'Veon Bell's had suspensions and injuries and drugs and holdouts and bad press. Todd Gurley has frankly been the better employee. And his bosses not only rewarded him, they gave him a little more than the position usually is worth. Todd Gurley is special. He's, a, he's two years younger than uh, Le'Veon Bell. And I believe the reason why they gave him this contract, for two reasons, Skip. He's younger, he has no check marks off the field. Mm. The Steelers had to weigh that into consideration. Le'Veon is two years older, so I think Le'Veon's about to be 27, if he's not already 27. And the issues that he's had to deal with mm -hmm. off the field. Clearly, Todd Gurley is more valuable. Clearly because- But you killing me though. <laughs> okay, but Les Snead said it yesterday in, in explaining why they gave this much money, they committed this much of their future to Todd Gurley. It's in large part because of the intangibles because he said his leadership, I don't yeah. think you get leadership from Le'Veon. His work ethic, I don't know about Le'Veon's work ethic. You had a team. It had a guy they were pleased with. They drafted him. And they must be pleased with everything that he's doing in the community and off the field. The difference between him and L. Bell is, it's not the big plays. It's not who's a better receiver. One guy's in the drug program, and one guy's not. So why would I give $57 million to a guy that potentially is looking at one more slip up and he's gonna face another significant suspension? He deserves this money. He is a guy, that, and there are a handful of guys like this. I think Zeke is one. I think El Bell has been one. I think David Johnson in Arizona, we forget about him because he dislocated his wrist last year, has been one. That are not your old school 
two down running backs that are bruisers that are likely to have the shortest of the short careers. They are valuable in the receiving game. They can be on the field all three downs and they are difference makers. What this does, hopefully, it paints Kawhi in a different light because everybody's like, mm -hmm. oh, he was dogging it. He wasn't hurt. He quit. He was making 19 million. He only played seven games. Mm. Hell, if I was Kawhi knowing what I know now, I should have played no games. Mm. So wow. I side with Kawhi. I sided with him in the beginning. Bottom line, what Danny Green said in his premier podcast, The Green Room, <laughs> changes zero about what I think about how Kawhi Leonard quit on the San Antonio Spurs last year. And I spoke directly to a doctor who examined Kawhi Leonard and saw the pictures. There was no structural damage anywhere. No knee, no hip, no bone damage. It was strictly soft tissue in the quadriceps tendon. He took a knee to the thigh. He had some discomfort and he missed 73 games yeah. with discomfort in your thought. Are you kidding me? What this shows is that no matter how great the organization is, no matter how well run it is, and the Spurs are both of those, they can make mistakes. Yes. So Kawhi Leonard did the right thing in getting a second opinion. There's a difference that you well know, and we, we all know, in sports where you could play or you should play. And I think outside doctors who aren't connected to the team are going to go with should. I wouldn't question an athlete's integrity. Were they hurt? Weren't they hurt? When he went for the second opinion, he was hurt. I've been telling you guys all season, Kawhi cannot play. It's the reason why he's not there. It's the reason why he's not on the bench. All right? Because he got misdiagnosed by the San Antonio Spurs. So Danny Green, this doesn't do anything for me. Medical staffs do this all the time. They miss on players. Typically, you just don't hear the players speak out or say anything. This, to me, is absolute public vindication for Kawhi Leonard because it's the same medical staff. Because it is the same people that Kawhi is saying, they misdiagnosed me. It lets the public know this wasn't just, oh, Kawhi wants to get to Los Angeles and by any means necessary, oh, he can't play through his quad injury. He said he was misdiagnosed by people that we now know misdiagnosed Danny Green. In the last year, LaMarcus Aldridge, get me out of here. Kawhi Leonard, I'm not playing. Danny Green. Yeah, they're doctors in San Antonio. I'm not saying they're bad, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I should have had a second opinion. I played injured. Isn't that interesting? When did all this start happening? When the face of Pop's religion, Tim Duncan, retired?